Good morning, everyone. I'm really, very really happy today to be with you. Uh, uh, we will uh, go through ordinary differential equations, uh, definitions, solutions of them. Uh, I will try today to handle separation of variables and uh, the homogeneous uh, uh, ordinary differential equations in this lecture. This is really a very nice lecture. It will uh, introduce to you how to solve ODEs uh, by the simplest uh, methods that you ever uh, heard about, it's, uh, the separation method and the homogeneous, and I will go through the other methods of solution that we will uh, encounter in our uh, course uh, for this semester. I will go through the exact and linear Bernoulli equations later on in the coming lecture. Uh, I hope this lecture will be very simple. Uh, you will have to review differentiation and integration before going through this, and we already did that before. Uh, the definitions are really important. I will go through them with you. Uh, most of the resources and everything you will find it on Canvas is really uh, uploaded over there. And uh, for the recorded sessions, for these recorded sessions, uh, you will find them on uh, our YouTube channel as we uh, introduced previously. Uh, so, most of the resources will be with you. Shabab, in the day, I want to work with the examples of the different degrees of the first and the second degree of the first degree. The topic is simple, it is simple to understand the steps of the different degree. You have to be able to find out the same in a perfect manner. Because, of course, after all, you are solving differential equations. And you have to find the definitions of the equations containing unknown function which has derivative so you will have to embed it in the solutions most of the solutions you embed it integration so you will have to review integration real paper okay let's start uh, this course uh, is very very important we'll find it in two modules 25 and 40 uh, as we can see as i told you previously our course notes and frequencies you will find it on canvas there is no problem on that so uh, once you need anything you will find it on canvas uploaded for you and otherwise you will find it on the youtube for the recorded sessions just in case if you want to review it again or you see me again you will find it on youtube okay why we study ODEs? or then we differentiate this chapter oh uh, the, the, the first chapter in ODEs is very very important it's written here that it's devoted to the solution of ordinary differential equations. The uh, application for it is ODEs and some of their application. Of uh, in history, the ordinary differential equation, you will find a very nice paragraph, the continuation of this uh, couple of lines. You will find it in our resources that's uploaded on campus. Uh, although the history of ODEs have been uh, well studied along the last time, it's still a little field of continuous investigation with the emergence of new connections with other parts of mathematics. ODEs have been a major branch of neuron applied mathematics since the 17th century. You can't even imagine it's, it's, it's really from the 17th century. So, you are, we are going through a part of the classical mathematics which is really vital. Uh, we are talking about some physical phenomena that you can measure the rate of a change of a certain function and you want to regain the main function uh, as we will see later on in the definitions. Uh, the general first order differential equation it will be mostly in the forms of y dash equal such simple function and most things so on. Damon had had in four detail the differential equations I tell you a chapter, and I'm going to tell you a list of chapter that devoted for the ordinary differential equations. Later on, we will go through higher order differential equations. The ordinary differential equations, y dash equal f of x or y, are to represent dy by dx, which is not equal to f of x or y. The main definition is really very important because it will uh, introduce to you the main terms that's used in ODEs and the various types of solutions and the various types of conditions that we will need to regain a particular solution as we can see. طبعا انا هبدا معاك اول حاجه by what we mean what we mean uh, when we say of differential equation. 
uh, it's written here in the definition, and we used it previously on these tables. Uh, in most of these tables, you will find the term, the definition, then a simple example to uh, make things much easier for you. Our modus, our definition, which is the linear differential equation, it's an equation that contains an unknown differentiated function in one variable, which is called the derivative science. As long as we are talking about uh, just only a single variable function, it means a function in one variable, so uh, you will find a typical derivative sign like this t1 by dx or y dash or y double dash later on in the higher order differential equations. What we mean about partial differential equation? It's exactly the same with a slight difference that the unknown function is a function in more than one variable. So, the derivative science that you will find is a partial derivative science as you can see. It is any equation that contains an unknown differentiated function in more, take care, in more than one variable. So the main difference between ODEs and BDEs, the ODEs, it's for the treatment of single variable function, which is function in one variable, but the EDEs, it's for the treatment of differential equations where the unknown functions uh, uh, I'm sorry, the unknown function is a function in several variables. Oh, with the key, here we have two partial derivative signs because we have more than one variable. So, u, which is the unknown function, maybe you will find it as differentiated because this is to y or differentiated with the other variable. In this, such a case, as you can see in this example, uh, y and x because it's a function in also. Which is the order of a differential equation. In order, we uh, the differential equation uh, uh, the highest derivative that exists in an equation. In order, we the differential equation or upper See, if we have y double dash as a function of x, x y dash plus y of x equals zero. So this is going to be a second order differential equation. In the inward order of a differential equation, what we mean about an order of differential equation, it is the highest number of derivatives that exist in a differential equation. Is a double derivative. Our second, it's really very important to know also the degree of a differential equation. If a boss, في عدد كبير جدا من differential من differential equations. في عدد كبير يعني it's it's really existent almost in plenty of fields. So the applications is enormous. In the other applications, it's very easy. So the next part, they have a classification. For the ODEs, by knowing the order and the degree, depending on the order and degree, the various methods of solutions will be determined later on. If I'm more than me, then I'm going to order of the differential equation with degree than the differential equation. And once I'm going to have an order with degree, it will depend on the the methods of solutions that you will follow in order to find the solutions for such problems. I'm going to have an order with degree. طيب ايه هو الديفينيشن اوف ديجري وات وي مين اباوت ديجري ان ديجري ذا باور اوف ذا هايست ديفيجن اكزيستس ان ديفيجن هو اكبر باور لاعلى تفاضل اكبر باور لاعلى تفاضل ان ذا هايست باور اوف ذا هايست ديجري سو اف وي هاف ذس اكزامبل لو تيجي تبص على الاكزامبل اللي موجود قدامي هتلاحظ الاتي هتلاحظ ان بالنسبه للاوردر اللي هو عدد مرات التفاضل ذس از ا ثيرد اوردر لان اكبر عدد مرات التفاضل موجود هنا ثيرد بعدين الديجري ات ذا باور اوف ذا هايست ديريفيتيف ذات اكزيست ان الفيتشر والباور هنا طبعا هيبقى 2 سو ذس از ا سكند ديجري ثيرد اوردر اوردينري ديفينشن ايشن ذس از ذا اكزاكت كلاسيفيكيشن اوف سوشيال بروبلم يبقى انا عملت ديجري وحددت الاوردر بتاع الديفرنشال ايكويشن بتاعتي. انزل طيب السولوشنز اوف ديفرنشال ايكويشن ازاي بعمل سولوشن الديفرنشال ايكويشن؟ اوكي 
It is to get the original form of the differential equation. Ashana, I'm going to solve these equations. I will have to find the original form of this function. Okay, really very simple. We have derivative. I want to regain the original form. So it means that we will make an integration. And I have to get Here we will to get the original form of the differentiated function before derivative. Of course, derivatives will be done using derivative power division. As long as you will integrate this problem for a definite for indefinite integration, you will have a constant of integrations that will appear while you are solving these equations. Here the following And 
we have the variables. See the ratio to pressure states of that. Y at zero, it will equal to negative three. So if we integrate this function and find the general solution, you will have one constant. If you use this condition, you will find the value of the particular solution and we will see that down the A boundary value problem is a differential equation between order that contains various conditions of the function and its derivatives at multiple points. يعني في بالنسبة للboundary هتلاقي conditions بتاعتك على الboundary أيضا بين simple value function so you will find at the start or at the end or at any point within the domain of this function uh, for example if you have a y double dash minus x y equal sine x here as you can see it's a second order second order it means the solution will contain at least two uh, I'm sorry it will contain two constants so you will need two conditions one of, as, as you can see y at one equal zero and y dash at one equal two you can use these conditions to find the values of the constants and you will have the particular solution as we said previously. Okay, this example is a really, very nice example to measure uh, the classification or to determine the classification of these French equations. You have all of these equations that exist in front of you in just a second. If I want to see, if I want to classify the first equation, I will go through first the order, then the degree, then the type of the differential equation, then the dependent and the dependent. If we want to say about the first, just a second, give me a second please. If we want to go through the first equation, see it's really very simple. All I have to do is to, is to see or to determine the highest power that exists in this differential equation. So it's the highest number. So we have y dash, we have y term. So if I am talking about the order, this is going to be a third order. Okay, and then I will identify the degree. I will look at the power of the highest derivative. I have three and two. So this is going to be a second. This is going to be a second degree equation. Okay. And the derivative that exists in this function is a root and derivative. So this is a same invariant function as you remark. Y is just a function in x only. So it's an ordinary differential equation. We can start by saying this is an ordinary differential equation, third order, second degree. In Y, in the dependent variable, or in X, in the independent variable. And I have a successful classification for this uh, differential equation. In a similar manner, if you want to go through the second problem, it's almost the same. As you can see, oh, let me put the red pen first. So, once more, the highest derivative that exists in this equation. I have second derivative, I have first derivative. So, uh, this equation, it will a second, okay, order, okay, let's go to the power of the highest derivative. In power of the highest derivative, this is power one, this is to the power of two, so this is going to be a first degree, okay, this is going to be a first degree. Uh, the derivative signs that exist here, uh, uh, it's a total derivative, since y is just only a function in t, so this is going to be an ordinary differential equation. Take care, in, in y is the dependent variable, we in t is the independent variable. Uh, this is going to be a third order, fourth degree, uh, ordinary differential equation, the dependent variable is x and the dependent variable is going to be y. On a similar manner, if you want to see, to make the classification of number 4, spot, this is not an ODE, this is a PDE. Why it's a PDE? As you can see, we have a partial derivative science. Zay bin Tashayif, an Aki Aradat, a Fadul Guzki. That means, in the new, is a function in more than one variable. So I'll start by saying, this is a partial 
differential equation. Then I will try to determine the highest derivative that exists in this uh, BDE. The highest derivative, this is the first derivative with respect to y, this is the second derivative, so it's going to be a second order. Then I will look to the power of the highest derivative. Although this is a first order, I'm uh, sorry, first derivative to a power 3, I don't care about it, but this is the highest derivative. The power of this derivative is 1, so it's going to be a second order, first degree partial differential equation. The dependent variable is u, and the independent variables, okay, this is the dependent variables, both of x and the y are the independent variables of this equation. And so you can find that and classify uh, uh, each of these differential equations. Once more, why the classification of the derivative is really very important. The classification of the derivative is really important as it will help you out to find the suitable method that's, uh, that's going to be applied to find the solution to such differential equations. شباب مهم جدا اكون عارف الاوردر والديجري بتاعت الديفرنشال ايكويشن اللي انا هتكلم معاها او هتعامل معاها لان بكل بساطه نجاحك في انك تحدد الاوردر والديجري هيساعدك انك تحدد السكسسفول ميثود اوف سولوشن ذات كان يو يوز تو فاين ذا سولوشن اوف سكسسفول ميثود. This is very very important okay okay uh, let me quit this okay let's quit it and back to our slides. Uh, according to the handouts that you will find on canvas, you will find the following. I'll start by stating the equations. This is number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. You will find on this table, uh, which is the dependent variable and the dependent variables. I already made the table like this. You don't have to follow me. Uh, what's really, really important is to define the type of the derivative is it ordinary or partial, then the order, then the degree, then the type of dependency of the variables. Uh, this is an ordinary differential equation, ordinary differential equation. See, it's it's very very simple. All of them are differential equation, ordinary differential equation, except that this equation is going to be a partial differential. In order, this is the third order, this is the highest order, this is the second most order, the highest order, this is the third order, the highest order that exists in this definition. This is the second order, this is the third order, and that one is the second order. The degrees in the power of the highest order, the power of the highest order, you see, it's very very simple. Uh, so, the highest order that exists in the third, so the, power, the degree is going to be two. Here, uh, the second shape is going to be one. Here, the order, third order, with power is going to be four. Uh, this one is the second order with a degree one. Uh, this one is a third order with a degree fourth degree. This is going to be the second order with third degree. The table will uh, 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 will be very very simple. If you want to do it, it's okay. If you want to just the state written, it's okay also. It's it. Oh, by the way, if I want to give you questions about this, if starting from the next semester, if I'm going to be with you, uh, if I want to ask you about this, I will try to do this part as an MCQ exam or as an MCQ questions. You will have, you will find the classifications, and you will have just only to identify by yourself which one of them is correct. This is one of the results that I would like to follow. This example is also a very nice example to show you how to get to identify a solution for a differential equation, how to identify a solution for a differential equation, and also how to find a particular solution of this equation. It's very, very simple. We didn't go through the methods of solution yet, but it just a simplif it, uh, uh, it's just a, a simplification of uh, the concepts of the solutions of these differential equations and also how to find the uh, particular solution once you have the general solution. He said that show that, show me please that this function which is e to the power of x c1 plus x plus c2 sin x 
it could be probably a German solution for this differential equation. What do you think? How, how to do it? It's really very simple. How to do it? How to be sure that this solution is a successful solution for this differential equation? It's not an academic handling with the data, handling the differential equation. Number was good then. Good then. All we have to do is to make a substitution. It's not solving any equation. If I say to you, y equal x plus 2, y equal x plus 2. So, x, if x, uh, 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 if I say, I'm sorry, if I say to you, x plus 2 equal 1, identify, identify the value of x. Please check if x equal negative 1, then x plus 2 is going to equal 1 in the right solution. All we have to do is to make any substitution. Now, I said, I can. إن ده حل المسألة بتاعتي كل اللي هيحصل في أي معادلة إن أنا بوجد الحل أعوض بيه بشوف إذا كان left hand side equal to right hand side equal so the idea I will take this y value as I can see from the differential equation there is y there is y dash and uh, I'm sorry there is y double dash so all I have to do is to find the second derivative find the first derivative and the function by itself and the I will substitute in the left hand side and to see if it's going to equal to the right hand side or not. كل اللي علينا نعمله همسك ال y اجيبلها التفاضل الثاني اجيبلها التفاضل الاول بعدين اروح جاي على طول عامل فيه substitution اعوض اذا كان ال left hand side يساوي right hand side voila you are right it's done. Okay first of all I have y here is the differential equation I'll start with the left hand side. Now this is y. y equal e to the power of x c1 plus x plus c2 sine x. So I can replace simply y by this value. I will try to find y dash. I don't want to lose time in this equation, so I will depend on the slides. As you can see, I will get y dash. How to get the first derivative for this function? Simply, I will find the derivative of the first part, then uh, I'll divide by the second. Then, according to the addition law, if you remember the addition law, if we have y equal u times v, y dash is going to equal to u dash times v plus u times v dash. Okay, it's a two parts. So, the derivative of e negative x is going to be negative of e negative uh, e to the power of negative x. Any, negative, any exponential function, once you are trying to get the solution of this exponential function, I'm sorry, the derivative of this exponential function is going to be the function by itself times the derivative of its power. أي دلالة بسي. علشان أقول أن التفاضل بتاعها كده دلالة نفسها times التفاضل بتاعها. يبقى e to the power of negative x is going to be e to the power of negative x times the derivative of negative x which is going to be negative 1 times the other bracket will be the same. Then plus vice versa. I will let e to the power of negative x to remain the same times the derivative of this bracket c1 differentiate cosine x is going to be x cosine x plus c2 cos x as you can see. This is the first derivative. But as we all can see, we have y double dash, so I will have to find the second derivative. If we, I want to find the second derivative, simply all I have to do is to differentiate this function once more. As you can see, we have two main parts, each one of them contains two functions. So I will start by differentiating the first part by the second, and uh, the same goes for the other part. So as you can see, if we try to differentiate e to the power of negative x, so it's going to be e power negative x times the derivative of the power, which is going to involve another negative times negative, it's going to be positive. The other bracket will be the same. Then I will differentiate this bracket, which will develop negative c1 uh, uh, sine x plus c2 cos x. Do I lose that? If we start to differentiate the other part in a similar manner, I will try to differentiate first e to the power of negative x, which will develop the same term. So this is uh, times 2. Okay. Then I will differentiate the last part times e negative x. So e x will remain, then this is going to be negative c1 plus x, negative c2 sine x as you can see. All I have to do now, I have y double dash, y dash, and I have y. And I'm I y double dash, my y dash, my y. 
All I have to do is to replace y from the dash by this value, then positive 2 times y dash, then negative 2 times y. Okay, done. I've tried to take the left hand side, I already tried to make the substitution, I have replaced y from the dash, then 2 times y dash, then 2 times y. As you can see, all the terms will be cancelled. Remark. Remark. This is e to the power of x, c1 plus x plus c2 sin x. See, see this part, it's exactly the same. All I have to do is to take the negative sign as a common. So, the first term will be cancelled with the last term from the first time. It term in our line, you are term in the and you will have just only negative 2 e to the power of x minus c1 sin x plus c2 sin x. Okay? It's remark, this is negative, this is positive, so these two terms also will be cancelled. Give me a second, please. Okay, as I stated to you previously, if you lock to this first term, it will be cancelled with this one. This is the third term, okay? You will find this one, it will be cancelled with that one. Also, if you remark, you will find 2 e to the power of negative x, negative c1 sin, negative c1, c2 sin. This is negative, this is positive, so also the are going to be cancelled together. If we look to the remaining terms, they are really exactly the same forms, opposite signs. So those terms also will be cancelled and the result will be equal to zero. That's the left and the side equal to the right and the side. That's and this function is really a solution for this differential equation. If I had right and left in the wall, we have e to the power of negative x, c1 plus x over c2 sin x is a successful solution for this differential equation. If I had the right and left in the wall, general solution, if I had e to the power of negative x, c1 times cosine x plus c2 times sin x. This is the successful solution, this is the general solution. If you remark, it contains two constants, which is c1 and c2. How to find this c1 and c2? Really very simple. I will do, I will use the conditions that embedded or given in this part. This is the second part of this part. Okay, let me see how to go through it. As I told you before, left hand is equal to the right hand side, side. So this is the solution. I want to find the particular solution. In order to find the particular solution, all I'm asking is to find C1 and C2 values. I will have to listen to what is given. Just look. I'm telling you that this is the two conditions that exist. Don't short it, you will be back. Short it out, you will be y will be equal to negative 2 once in x equal 0. In condition, then you will be in y dash will be equal to 5.5 once in x equal 0. All I have to do is to make a substitution for this one. All I have to do is to make a substitution. This is the y. This is the y. I will have to replace every x by 0. So, e to the power of negative 0 is going to be 1. c1 cosine 0, so it will remain c1. c2 sine 0, it will be removed. So, once you apply this condition, if I want to apply this condition, what's the second? If I want to apply the first condition, I will go through this condition. I will get the value of y, saying y equal negative 2, and once it makes it equal 0. We can write it like this. Y will equal negative 2, 1, 7, x equals 0. I will take Y. I will take Y. So just a second. I will take Y. Here we go. Y, which equal to C, uh, I'm sorry, E to the power of negative x. C1 cosine x plus C2 sine x. Make the replacement, please. Y equal negative 2, okay, replace every x by 0, 
if we replace every x by 0, sine 0 is going to be 0, so this part is removed. Cosine x equal 1, once in x equal 0, so you will have c1 e to the power of negative x is going to equal to uh, 1, so you have c1 equal to 0. I'm going to find it, the value of c1. If it is a inequality, and I have in c1, we say we so if I want to find the values that I have another condition, the condition that you need, the condition that states that y dash will equal 5.5 once you substitute the x equal to 0. How to find, how to use this condition? Take care, this condition is about y dash. So all I have to do is to go back to y dash, this is y dash, I will take it here and then I will make this substitute. أروح بقى أخذ الـ function اللي هي y dash وأعمل بيها substitution اللي هقدر أشوفها. بصوا كده يا باشمهندسين أهو أنا الستيب أنا y at 0 أنا عملت substitution that's it c1 equal negative 2 هبدأ أهو أخش على السولوشن التاني أمسك y dash replacing every x by 0 you will find that negative c1 plus c2 equal 5.5 I'm already added in C1 equal negative 2, so it's going to be positive 2. C2 will equal 5.5, but then you will move negative uh, positive 2 from the left hand side to the right hand side, so it's going to be negative 2. Let's say C2 will equal 3.5. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm sorry. You will find the complete solution, of course, in, uh, in the PDF, but uh, uh, it's very really simple. If I want to if I want to uh, try to see you, okay. See, we here already know that C1 equal negative 2. I will take it and go here. So we will have positive 2 plus C2, which is going to equal to 5.5. Just move positive from left to right. So we will end up having C2 equal 3.5. Now the particular solution is already given, which is e to the power of negative x. Open the bracket. C1 equal negative 0. So going to be negative 2 cos x plus c2 will be exist which is 3.5 time sine x over the final What we learned from this example First of all how to check a solution if I have the 